Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Mustard seed, mustard seed faith grows. Try to say that too fast. Might be a tongue twister. So we're starting the Gospel of John Bible study. I know, I know it sounds a little backwards because I did Acts first. But I was just led to do Acts. So we're gonna, John is, I mean, I love all the Gospels because they, each gospel is kind of catered to the four basic personality types. You can look that up. I, I would get off on a tangent if I started just going into that because my degree is in psychology. But I never pursued a master's. If I really wanted the master's, I could have. But I was just kind of disenchanted because psychology is a science. Yes. Science is great. Love science. However, it ignores a lot of the spiritual aspects of people. I did look into getting a master's in counseling at a Bible college, but it was online, but it turned out that a lot of what was online, they wanted you to do face to face when you're supposed to be at work. So that just kind of turned me off that and the whole having to take out giant loans thing and then wanting a cosigner, which I've never had a cosigner for anything in my life. So, you know, wasn't going to ask anybody to cosign. That's just not how I roll. So I guess that was just a roadblock telling me not to do that at this time. So here I am. And we are starting the Gospel of John. I already have this up there in John 1 and 2 back towards Easter time. Because I felt compelled to do that. But we're going to go one by one. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made that has come into being. Some of my favorite words right there. I mean, it, that just is so, it just grabs my heart. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. There came a man commissioned and sent from God whose name was John this man came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe in Christ the light through him. John was not the light, but came to testify to the light about it. Came to testify about the light. There it was, the true light, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which coming into the world enlightened everyone, enlightens, present tense, everyone. He, Christ, was in the world and through the world was made through him, though the made, all right, let me try that again. He, Christ, was in the world, and through the world, no, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, and it still doesn't. The world is out there. We live in it. It's our terrarium, but we are not of it. Once we know Christ and accept him, for who he is and what he's done for us, then we aren't no longer of this world. We're of the spiritual element that we are created originally in the image and likeness of God. Don't let me digress, here I go. He came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession, and those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, did not receive and welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, and the privilege to become children of God. That is, to those who believe to, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. Who were born not of blood, natural conception, nor of the will of the flesh, physical impulse. Nor of the will of man, that of a natural father, but of God that is a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God spiritually, transformed, renewed, sanctified.
And the word Christ became flesh and lived among us. And we actually saw his glory. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father, the son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. John testified repeatedly about him and has cried out testifying officially for the record with validity and relevance. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has a higher rank than I and has priority over me for he existed before me. For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. For the law was given through Moses, but grace, the un undeserved, unmerited favor, the unearned favor of God and truth came through Jesus Christ. Oh, if people would just understand this. It doesn't matter if you are living in the depths of sin right now. It does not matter if you are high as a kite while watching this. Or laying in the bed of your lover that you are not married to. It does not matter if you stop right there and just turn to Jesus. Because it says right here, this, because I hated myself for a long time too, people. And even if you don't think you hate yourself and you're just like, I'm enjoying my best life living in the sin or outside the will of God, you're thinking like the law. The law was given through Moses, but grace, the unearned, undeserved favor of God. Unearned and undeserved because none of us can earn it by our good deeds and none of us deserve it because we are all sinners because that's just how it is. The unearned, undeserved favor of God and truth came through Jesus Christ. You can turn to him right now and say, God, I'm, I'm, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm going to try to do better. I'm trying. I resolve to do better. Please forgive me. Please fill my being. A lot of people say, come into my heart. But that's just another word for your entire being. Because none of us, me looking like a goody two-shoes reading the Bible here doesn't deserve it i can't earn it by reading this bible study every day or doing good deeds i'm too poor to do many good deeds outside of being loving to people as i can within my nature because i always look grumpy it's just my nature i have resting b wet face syndrome but anyhow you can you can we are all invited now it's up to you to accept that and even if you think you have and you mess up again doesn't mean you can't try again God knows we all fail. I fail every day. Heck, I can stub my ho toe, toe really, really hard and let out a naughty word. Oh, it happens. And I'm like, oh God, that wasn't very nice of me. But anyhow, let's go. Keep on. No one has seen God, his essence, his divine nature at any time. The one and only begotten God, that is the unique Son, who is the intimate presence of the Father, he has explained him and interpreted him and revealed the awesome wonder of the Father. This is the testimony of John the Baptist when the Jews sent priests and Levites to him from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed truthfully and did not deny that he was only a man, but acknowledged, I am not the Christ. I'm not the Messiah, the anointed. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the promised prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Tell us so that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one shouting in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize only in water, but among you there stands one whom you do not recognize and of whom you know nothing. It is he, the preeminent one, who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie, even as his slave. These things occurred in Bethany across the Jordan at the river crossing where John was baptizing. 
The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I and has priority over me, for he existed before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I came baptizing in water so that he would be publicly revealed to Israel. John gave further evidence, testifying officially for the record with validity and relevance, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this one is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I myself have actually seen that happen, and my testimony is that this is the Son of God. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked along and said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. John is talking about a Old Testament Passover lamb here. When he says, a lot of people don't understand lamb of God. John is referring to the fulfillment of the need for the Old Testament Passover lambs, which was now fulfilled in Christ's sacrifice, the ultimate and final sacrifice for sins. He and Jesus were related through their mothers, Elizabeth and Mary, but he was unknown as the Messiah until God revealed it to John at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So they followed Jesus, these two disciples. And Jesus turned and saw them following him and asked them, what do you want? They answered him, Rabbi, which translates teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went with them and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. And side note, the Romans reckoned time for midnight. So in Roman time, the 10th hour would be 10 a.m. The Jews reckoned daytime from sunrise about 6 a.m. So in their system, the 10th hour would be 4 p.m. Hi, here, either time is possible, though the Roman reckoning may be more likely because if it were 4 p.m., the disciples might have felt compelled to go home before evening set. So we're saying 10 o'clock. One of the two who heard what Jesus said, and as a result followed Jesus, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first looked for and found his own brother, Simon, and told him, We have found the Messiah, which translated means the Christ. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas. This translates to Peter, which is a translates to our word for rock solid as a rock that he messed up too like we all do as you will hear the next day jesus decided to go into galilee and he found philip and said to him follow me as my disciple accepting me as your master and teacher and walking the same path of life that i walk he didn't say all those words he said follow me but the way he said it translates over to what i just said now philip was from bethsaida the city of andrew and peter Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus from Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael answered him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob, in whom there is no guile, nor deceit, nor duplicity. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know these things about me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, when you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus replied, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe in me? You will see greater things than this. Then he said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God descending and ascending on the Son of Man. That is the bridge between heaven and earth. And that concludes chapter one.